Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. If you're like me, cutting raw material is a necessary part of, of any job, but it's not always the sexiest. And there's always the search for the magic tool. It was it a band saw, is it a cold saw, is it a friction saw, is it torching it? And <laughs> part of me feels like I found the answer. I had a large job to do, uh, a couple hundred pieces, some aluminum, some steel. My bandsaw wasn't up for the challenge. I'll get into that later in this video. And on a whim, I bought the DeWalt multi-tool uh, DW872. I, I had actually heard good things about it. Um, coincidentally, my buddy Brad over at Tactical Key Change just posted a video on his as well. Uh, it, I bought it from Amazon. It was free shipping. If you do Prime, uh, there's a link below too uh, for it. And bottom line, holy cow, this saw is amazing. Totally uh, surprised me, knocked my socks off. And there's a lot of reasons I really like it. A couple small drawbacks, but before we get into all that stuff, let's take a quick look at some cuts. So as you can see, this is a piece of aluminum. We're cutting right through it. What's amazing is not only the speed and the quality of the cut, but the part remains cool. It's just, it's an amazing cutter. Now what we can do is we can swap over and we're gonna put a piece of two inch by two inch tubing steel and we're gonna cut right through it the same cutter and the same blade. So let's take a step back. Why did I buy this saw? I actually had one similar to it and the uh, stator went out on it and it was an $89 Home Depot where I would be seven and a quarter inch. There's a picture of it actually right here from Home Depot. And it, it worked great. I used it for a while, but th there were two big problems with that saw. One is that it didn't have any built-in fastening or fixturing or vise. So that meant you either had to use an external vise or you were applying some sort of the pressure to the part to hold it in place. And that's unacceptable on a saw that it's running like this. Um, and that segues into the other problem with that saw is it's a 5,800 RPM saw and that kind of speed, uh, it is not good. If the, if the part bites on you or something pinches, your fingers can be gone f way too quickly. So I like the DeWalt a lot for those two reasons uh, on the opposite side. One, it's got a built-in vise, which whether or not it's the perfect vise, it certainly lets you hold the part pretty securely and get your fingers out of the way. And number two, it runs at 1300 or so RPM, a lot slower. So large diameter blade nonetheless, but still, uh, I, I wouldn't say the DeWalt saw is a totally safe piece of equipment. It's certainly still a dangerous piece of equipment if you're not careful, but much safer than that uh, old Ryobi I was using. Um, so again, why did I like this saw? The Ryobi crapped out on me. I needed something that was more continuous duty that I could cut straight for a few hours with. And my bandsaw, I love my bandsaw, but that aluminum cut we just showed on the DeWalt that took about 20 seconds, I did it in my bandsaw. You can see here, I'm not gonna walk to make you watch the footage. It took three minutes and 38 seconds. Now, maybe my bandsaw has a little too much spring pressure that's not causing it to down feed aggressive enough, but big, big difference. And when you look at the cuts right here, you can see the DeWalt cut is pretty darn square and the bandsaw cut has some uh, angle to it. And again, that may be my bandsaw. It may need tweaked or tuned up, but I'll tell you, I've owned a bandsaw for a number of years and uh, one this small can tend to have problems like that. So why else do I like the saw? Amazon has it for $435. I believe it'll qualify for free shipping. I know I'm a member of Prime and I got it for free shipping in two days. And that's uh, when I'm busy having it show up at my doorstep in a couple days versus having to go out and find it is uh, worth its weight in gold. My Home Depot doesn't even carry it in their local store. And there's a link below to Amazon. In full disclosure, I'm a member of the Amazon Associates program. So if you click that link and buy it, I do get uh, a little cut. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps put these videos out there. So thank you for that, for those of you that click on it. I like the handle on it. The handle is a horizontal position. It's a little bit easier to grab than I think a lot of the standard style uh, fat friction saws that you see. The cut doesn't leave any burr. It's a cold cut, so you're not having a, a, a hot part to hold afterward. Again, hugely nice compared to the friction saw. The 14 inch diameter blade is a great size for 
uh, working with larger work pieces. I threw a two by four on here the other day because I had to cut one real quick and it actually cut beautifully. It's pretty quiet. I, you probably should still use ear protection, but compared to some of the other saws out there, I find that it's quieter. Certainly it was a quieter than that Ryobi that I used to use. So, so nothing wrong with that. A couple of the downsides, like I said, it still can be a dangerous piece of equipment. That's not really a downside. That's just the reality of it. It's a little bit larger kerf than a bandsaw blade if you care a lot about that. I like the vise. I like the quick action style. I like the fact that it's got Acme cut threads, not standard threads. It gives a lot of purchase and, and power in that vise. I don't really like the miter function. It walks on me a little bit over time, I found. And for a guy, I mean, I may cut one angle thing a month, but I'm going to cut quite a few hundred that I want them to be, be 90s or, or straight on. So I would rather it lock back down better in the zero angle position. And on that note, you know, one of the things I'm dealing with here is I've, I've been fortunate enough to have, be busy enough to pick up some part-time help. But what that means is I've got sort of semi-skilled labor. So those, these are guys that may know how to run a piece of equipment, but they're not, uh, say, checking for squareness like an owner would or like someone who's going to do the sort of quality control. It's another reason I've got to be thinking about safety, which I want this saw to be safer if someone else is using it. But I also want to know that it's just going to cut 90s. It's not going to walk. You're not going to have to check it every few days. Um, and that's not really the case. I, I, if you're using this saw a lot, I would check the vise, make sure it's holding true for you. I have cut some solid steel bar with it, but I didn't like it. It, it didn't um, it didn't hang on me. It cut beautifully, actually. It just didn't feel the same as cutting any of the even heavy wall tubing. That tubing we cut was 11 gauge. Cut great. Uh, and I've cut you know two and a half by two and a half inch aluminum, no problem. But for now, I'm going to go easy on solid steel because uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't want to uh, wear the blade out. You read online, some of the folks have mentioned, you know, maybe you get 600 cuts uh, per blade. Now, I don't know whether they mean 600 in steel or aluminum or what thickness and how heavy they're pushing, but you do want to be easy with uh, the downward pressure. Let the saw do the cutting, don't push down into it. Um, I'll be sure to let you guys know what I find on blade life. You can get them resharpened, but may or may not be economical based on uh, you know, I think it's like 66 teeth, so it depends on what you can get resharpened for per tooth. Uh, but all in all, incredibly happy. I, I think it's a great piece of equipment, and it, it made this last job I had to go through so much easier, cutting that much aluminum, cutting it square, cutting it quickly, and cutting it safely. And if you're looking for, uh, you know, one piece of equipment that needs to play a couple different roles in your shop, I really would highly recommend this DeWalt. Uh, multi-cutter DW872. That's it for today, folks. Coincidentally, I bought a new bandsaw. I'm going to leave you hanging with that. Uh, what model, what brand, if you guys want to guess below in the comments, we'd be curious to see if anyone gets it right. If they do, I'll get you a, a new t-shirt coming your way. Uh, otherwise, for now, folks, I do appreciate the thumbs up, the shares, the likes. Take care. See you soon. I picked up this digital tachometer. I needed it to calibrate a machine and RPMs, and it's pretty cool. You just have to stick a reflective sticker on it, which I did on the blade right there. Now we have to be very careful. So this is the don't do this at home disclaimer. But what we'll do is we'll keep our arms away from the saw, and we will turn it on with the guard up. Again, don't try this at home. And if you see, 1285 to 1357 was the range. For those of you still watching, let's cut some more material and I'll show you how she works. I'll put my iPhone down with the timer so you can see that uh, the, as the time passes. <clears throat> One and a half inch square aluminum. <laughs> Looks like 28 seconds. I probably had a second there to start. Again, part is cool. That's really cool, I think. 
try a piece of one by four inch aluminum. Just shy of a minute, about 57 seconds. And for you fabricators out there, standard piece. Uh, oh, you know what? I thought this was two by two by quarter. It looks like it's one and a half. But pretty cool to hop on the same machine and go cut a piece of angle like this. Six seconds and again part is cool to the touch and no burrs if we look at that no burrs at all run my finger all over that so you can see awesome I love the saw I'll also mention that when we were running this on that job I, we probably had it going for five or six hours with not a lot of uh, time off so no problem on the duty cycle in our experience that's it for today, folks. Really appreciate it. Enjoy. Take care. See you soon.